Um, so I'm Tim from Dalesford. I've been at Dalesford for 11 and a half years, looking after the sustainability uh, for Carol Bamford. Um, I'm just going to talk about who we are, uh, a little bit why I'm here and why we're here, uh, and then what we are doing to address that. Um, so who are we? That's Carol Bamford in the middle. She is the wife of uh, Lord Bamford, JCB chairman. Um, she has a farm shop in Gloucestershire, four farm shops in London. We're on Ocado, we're on Abel and Cole, um, and various other uh, wholesale customers. She also has an estate in, in France uh, with olive oil and uh, beautiful rosé wine. Um, she owns uh, Bamford, which is a, a, a sort of lifestyle, a well-being, um, spas, uh, clothes, bath and body products, that sort of thing. Sheep. Um, but I'm here really to talk about Dalesford food. We have a uh, farm in Gloucestershire in the Cotswolds. We have a dairy farm, uh, a dairy herd, beef herd, sheep, uh, laying hens, um, market garden, about 30 acres of market garden. And then in Staffordshire, just up the road, um, we have a herd of venison, uh, another herd of beef, um, some broiler chickens, and more sheep. So we're in, in total, we're farming about uh, 1,000 hectares in both locations. Um, and we see that all the way through, from the soil, from the market garden, from the eggs being laid in the, in the hen houses, all the way through um, the bakery and pastry, cheese making, we have our own creamery on farm. Um, we have our own abattoir at the uh, farm in Staffordshire, so we kill all, all our own animals. Um, we actually have a single source of pork that we, so put pigs, as you may have noticed, is the only thing we don't, don't do, and we put them all through our abattoir as well. Um, and then straight into our uh, retail settings and cafes. So we're about 50-50 split. Um, so why am I here to talk about Dalesford? Um, we've just taken one approach. We're very fortunate to be, in a, uh, to be, to be um, part of a family that's extremely driven to do the right thing uh, from the very outset, hence why I was employed 11 and a half years ago when the company was still quite small. Um, uh, to do the right thing, but more and more is that becoming apparent. And as Gavin pointed out in that, um, in that research slide, that health is the number one factor that time and time again is playing on people's minds when they're choosing food to eat. And we should all be thinking about that very carefully in the way that we, uh, way do, our, way we do our farming and buying and so on. Um, and then we keep on getting these sort of uh, little flashpoints, and the latest one being Blue Planet. Um, and increasingly, we, we seem to be building up to that sort of uh, realization that we're at a tipping point, a planetary tipping point. Um, and these are all red flags, as Gavin points out, uh, for customer confidence in your business, but also um, the, just resilience and the risk of your business. So rather than just seeing these as trends, we should all be learning from them and foreseeing them and, and predicting them and planning into our business so that we change not just reactionary, but change the culture of our business to, to be more sustainable. Um, I'm going to whistle through these sides. You all know it, I'm sure, but unhealthy consumption is where we're um, eating nothing but highly refined and highly processed foods and um, nothing but grain-fed ruminant uh, meat and, um, uh, in, in my strong opinion, GMOs. And we all know the food planet uh, and uh, people, um, triple bottom line uh, analogy, and then how that plays out, um, food being poorly distributed, uh, low nutritional value, uh, high calorie, um, and then people, whether it's on your own doorstep or further away, malnourished. There's a staggering statistic that I heard at the Oxford Farming Conference that, uh, yes, we all know that there's a lot of starving people and, and hungry people in the world, around about 800, 900 million, uh, but there's also the 1.5 billion people that are obese or overweight. Um, and then there's that 2 billion people that are actually malnourished in one way or another, maybe not apparent in their waistline, uh, but, um, but aren't getting those essential vitamins and, and, uh, and nourishment to keep them healthy. So we've got all the unwell uh, and dietary sensitivities um, coupled with a sedentary lifestyle and, and just the way that we're, we're uh, living our lives nowadays. Um, and then, of course, the planetary issues um, leading to global instability. Um, my wife's a doctor, she's also uh, a nutritionist, and time and time again, she keeps on pointing at food 
that could actually cure nine tenths of her patients that walk through the door. Um, and so that's why she's done nutrition in the last two years. And, and it's, it's staggering that the public health crisis is just right there in front of us. And yet uh, there's very little being done about uh, tackling it um, through, through the food supply chain. Food shortages, we're about to see some extraordinary uh, effects of Brexit, no doubt. Um, but uh, so price hikes, food wastage, interesting news uh, from Mr. Gove yesterday. Um, and then what does healthy consumption look like in, in, uh, from Dalesford's perspective? So we're looking at local seasonal focus, more veg, better meat. I love meat. We are a meat farm, but it's got to be produced right. And you know, we saw the uh, water impact of, of pork and, uh, and dairy in um, one of Gavin's slides there. And we can't stress enough that you, know, you just can't go uh, having a meat-focused diet all the time. It's got to be uh, a vegetable-focused diet. And then, of course, organic. Now, organic is, it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But ultimately, when I say organic, it's, it's a baseline of, of standard that you get past to, um, to prove that you've ticked a number of boxes in that sustainability box. Um, and then, of course, it, the picture of how that looks uh, for your business and, and the world changes. And we have a thriving, harmonious planet with plenty of taste as well. So what are we doing at Dalesford? Um, so we pledged uh, last year to, uh, we refocused, we had a bit, of a bit of a strategy rethink. Where are we having most impact within our business? Is it in packaging? Is it in um, our supply chain abroad? Or is it on our own farm? Um, and we looked at all those touch points that, uh, that we were having, making a difference. Um, or having the most, making the most difference. Future farming comes time and time again at the top of our, our priorities and the way that we try and communicate what we're doing and, um, and where we think we might be slightly ahead of, uh, ahead of the rest of the game. So, so that, that was the first pledge, continuing to try and change the face of British farming, so actively uh, lobbying and presenting uh, a case for better farming in Britain. Um, and then clean energy, we consume a lot of energy. We have a creamery, a bakery, um, cookery school, production kitchens, all on the farm. We, we generate uh, our own electricity, but not enough, and our own heat. So that's a, that's a target that we, we set ourselves for the next couple of years. Packaging likely, um, zero waste. You know, the food, food supply chain is, uh, is full of waste and packaging. So we needed to uh, address that. Whether we're the best at it, we need to improve, or, or whether we, um, we've got something to be really proud of. And then, of course, the things that we're not getting from our own farm, sourcing responsibly. So how are we doing that? So future farming. Um, the top left there for you uh, is agriculture. That's the Dalesford Foundations project. That's our charity that uh, uh, Carol Bamford set up about 10 years ago. Um, all the, uh, the funding goes into agriculture now to support um, well the 27 steering group members from ADAS and Sirencester Agricultural University, right the way through to the Soil Association, Rothamsted, all the partners on agroecology uh, to try and communicate their best practice, they are, their new research in ecological farming techniques, regardless of labels. It doesn't matter if you're organic, it doesn't matter if you're biodynamic, worshipping the stars, whatever. If you are doing something that's using, utilizing, optimizing ecology instead of lots and lots of inputs, to produce food sustainably, uh, we are profiling on agroecology, and um, and not just the research and, and sort of uh, academic-led work, but also the farmers' uh, interpretation of that, and so highlighting those those best practice farmers as well. So I, I really encourage you, if you're interested in how uh, how agroecology and organic and and leaf farmers and so on are progressing and the new stuff from mintil and soil structures all the way through to uh, optimizing water usage, reducing antibiotics. It's all on the Agroecology website, and I've got some leaflets. Plug over. Uh, and then some innovative projects on the farm. So this is uh, some of our market gardeners uh, planting some kale in the chicken field. We had a 30-acre chicken field. Um, and we recognize that you can't just get away with focusing on one crop in a system like ours, you've got to think about diversity and optimizing that land. So we are now following our hens in their fallow years with the kale, 
but then we've also planted 800 apple trees, uh, 36 different varieties, so we're producing a fruit crop as well. We've got biomass trees, 2,500 biomass in there as well in rows, and this is all creating cover to encourage the ranging of the chickens to enhance their, uh, their welfare, hopefully reduce their stress, they're ranging more, less stress on the ground around the houses, and less parasitic burden. All in all, it's very symbiotic. If you can get out there, uh, win a Woodland Trust grant, which we did, fully funded, and um, plant all this, it, it does actually start to, to knit together very nicely. So our 30-acre market garden that's producing, sorry, 30-acre chicken field that's producing about a million and a half eggs a year is now yielding a whole lot more. Um, wetland uh, creation projects, um, hedge laying competitions, beekeeping, all that sort of thing. Uh, we really take pride in. We have big summer festivals we get, and harvest festivals. We get lots of people on the farm to come and see how we're uh, sort of trying to um, nurture the landscape. And, and at the end of the day, we're custodians. Again, we've got a family at the helm that want to leave it to another generation. And it's it, it really does change the mindset. They want to be planting trees to see their, their grandchildren swing from them and all the their great-grandchildren swing from them in, in 30 years' time. And then I couldn't help the old mugshot of us uh, uh, with Mr. Gove there. We worked very closely with Patrick Holden. Uh, we were talking about a sustainability metrics, a bit of harmonization sustainability metrics. Is. There's 400 odd metrics out there. Um, and if a farmer had that, that sort of guidance to help him improve year on year and start benchmarking his water consumption, energy consumption, antibiotic usage, all that sort of thing, feed costs, diesel costs, uh, and a very simple platform, um, how that could really help the farmer, but also help the, uh, the supply chain understand how that farm is operating. And then ultimately, we've been throwing up an amazing opportunity with uh, um, getting rid of cap and reinventing it with something. So we were, we were um, at uh, DEFRA's door. Um, sourcing responsibly, well, we use the organic uh, logo as our go-to benchmark for, for sustainable uh, sourcing. Um, all our restaurants and ca or cafes are all 100% uh, or 97% organic certified. Uh, and that just means that we're, we don't have to try and apologize for anything that uh, um, doesn't quite hit the mark. We just get the Soil Association to do it for us. Uh, and then, of course, there's some wild things as well. Um, some forage bits and pieces. Uh, you know, having the MSC uh, MCS Good Fish Guide as a benchmark as well. Never having anything from the fish to avoid list. Um, packaging lightly, clean energy, zero waste. No plastic straws. Straw straws. It's the way forward, unless you've got gluten intolerance. They are fantastic, um, and our customers absolutely love it. You know, they really want to hear you or, or try something new. Okay, so if you bite them, they snap and they spray your drink all over you. But you get used to that. You, 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 you start to respect the straw. Um, obviously, solar panels, uh, biomass boilers, all that sort of thing for clean energy. Now we're looking at the sort of technology that we can, we can have um, chilling off our biomass, have a generator off the biomass, um, and try and get that really holistic energy management on the farm as well, um, where we, as I say, do consume a lot of energy. And then the knock-on effect of some of our packaging initiatives um, talking to our supply chain, our distributors who were previously just chucking their, their pallet wrap into a skip because they couldn't recycle it for all of their customers, um, tons and tons, costing them putting it in the skip. And now they're putting it through their baler and, um, and they're taking it off our hands because we don't generate enough to put through our baler. Uh, and, um, and they're making a bit of a, a, uh, an income to cover the costs of, of their cardboard compactor, their cardboard baler. So it's all, it's all about working with the supply chain and, and trying to come up with solutions um, something that we're really proud of as well is the Felix project um, that uh, um, the Evening Standard have really got behind. But we uh, we've got a very enthusiastic guy in the in store that um, that's been volunteering with them for a few uh, or a couple of years now, and really brought it to our attention. So we've been working with the Felix project to try and rehome some of food, London's food surpluses. They take some of ours when we overorder on spices or something. Um, and, uh, and that really sort of connects uh, beyond our usual customer. And um, it's, uh, it's a great charity to get behind. And it was fantastic news when Mr. Gove announced uh, his um, support for, for re rehousing uh, surplus food yesterday. Um, so I can't believe I've managed to 
fly through that presentation quite so quickly. But there is clearly still a lot to do.